time, but we want to get all your questions answered too. Um, before we get started, is there any questions that are just like burning in your mind that we want to make sure that we don't miss as we're going through all this? Um, I did see that there was, um, was it an amendment? What was it? Where um, Biden would give new homeowners the. No, it was, a, it, was a, it was similar to a first time home buyer's loan. Um, it was like, I think something around like $25,000. For very first time home buyers, but there were certain stipulations right. to be met for that. I'm still waiting for him to pay off my student loan, too. That's fair. Same. Same. So. Same. Uh, um, I'm not sure about that program, but um, Darren is our lender, and he's going to be addressing some of those when we get when I bring him up here. Okay. So there are it's not twenty five thousand dollars, I don't think, but there are some things that are really helpful to get, especially first time buyers into their first home. Okay. okay. So. Anyway, that's just, um, so this is kind of like the things we're going to be hitting today is we're going to talk about the, the housing market and basically what we're, we're trying to do is give you guys enough information that you can make a good decision. Now, I know you said you're looking to go to Minnesota, so mm -hmm. some of this you just have to like transfer to Minnesota, mm -hmm. but who knows? I mean, you might win the lottery and say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to work out of, at a Nampa for the rest of my life. <laughs> Possible is that high on the chance of it. Um, then we're going to talk about some incentives with home builders and then um, what changes when you become a homeowner because there are some changes and you guys are first time so you've never had one before so um, and then we're going to talk about what it looks like for you um, we'll have Darren come up and we'll look at some houses that are currently out there to kind of give you an idea of what's going on and if I talk too fast just slow me down a little bit uh, I did want to get started with here volatility continues so one of the big things that um, dictates what house prices are, what payments are, is interest rates, right? So we've got, on the one hand, we've got data showing that we have stronger than expected private payrolls, so that means that um, it, it spooked investors. We have more, essentially what it is, is they raise the interest rates to slow down the economy, and then the economy's not slowing down in the way that they thought it would. So this is going to lead the Federal Reserve to continue its aggressive rate hikes. But however, um, unemployment fell, but wages didn't go up. So I guess that's making the Federal Reserve a little bit, you know, happy that way, because slow wage growth is typically an indicator of an indication pressure is waning. So according to this, inflation on the one hand is going down, on the other hand, it could be going up. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe that um, lenders have kind of already pre-programmed into their prices the next rate hike. So if there's another increase by the feds, that we won't see a whole big change in what's going on with um, as far as it goes to uh, getting a mortgage rate. Um, but Derek can address that a little bit more later. And so five real estate trends that are primed to dominate 2023. So there will be more inventory. So, and this information is nationwide. Um, and here in the Valley, it's going to be no different. We already have tons of inventory for brand new homes. So some of the big builders like CBH and Hubble, they just built and built because for so long we were behind the power curve and they're just building to the building and then things slowed down, but they were still building the building. And so now they have too much inventory. I think CBH has something like five extra 500 extra homes available right now. And um, so that's a lot of pressure on them to uh, do something about it, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, house prices are up, sellers are making more concessions. Well, actually, in our area, we're one of the four metro areas where prices have come down year over year from December. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But um, definitely, sellers are making a lot more concessions. Um, a year ago, it was like it was a bidding war, and you said, "No, I'm not even going to like have a home inspection or anything." Now it's you can go in, you can ask sellers to help pay down your closing costs, make repairs, and things like that. Um, and when it comes to uh, new builders, or like CBH or something, um, we can definitely go in and ask them for helping with their closing costs and maybe putting blinds in the house because new houses don't come with blinds typically. Um, there is still a shortage of starter homes, so houses that are easier to get into because of the price, um, there's, there's never enough of those. 
Um, this is, I thought was interesting. Rent is still going up and up and up. And rents did come down. I don't know, like eight months ago. I don't know. Did your guys' rent come down a little bit? Oh, um, no, no, it did not. Well, so, no. <laughs> so are you guys in a three bedroom or two bedroom? Three. Three. So you're paying like 1600 a month? Yes. Yeah. And then well, the five dollars per month fee. It's supposed to be seventeen, but because we we transferred from a one bedroom unit to a three bedroom unit, they kept with that um, current tenant um, price. Nice. So it's supposed to be seventeen, but we pay sixteen as a result. Mm -hmm. And have you been over there long enough to see? It, did it used to be more, and then it came down, or no? It didn't no, at well. first it just went up. It went up year over year. So. <clears throat> So rents going up, and we'll talk about some of the reasons for that in just a second. Mortgage rates should top out by the summer. Again, that kind of goes back to the first slide. It's like they really don't know where it's, what's going to happen. Um, so should you rent or buy three tips? I thought one of these tips was really good. That's why I put this in here. Um, don't base your decision solely on interest rates because there's a lot more that goes into a house payment. It could be like your PMI, or it could be your um, initial financing costs are raised to get your interest rate down. But in the long run, if you're only there for a short time, maybe a couple of years, it doesn't pay off. It would actually be better to have a slightly higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. So don't don't say, well, it's like, well, we have a interest rate over here is a half a point less, so we'll go with that. There's just more to it than just the rate. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a Dave Ramsey. You guys know Dave Ramsey? The personal finance guy from Tennessee? Oh my gosh, well, this would be something. We're, we're 20 something, we don't know much about anything. <laughs> Tennessee, that's a state over down south. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, Dave Rounds, yeah. There you go. Well, the, you were just telling us you lived through all these catastrophes going back for like. Uh, I think I went as far back as like. 9 11. 9 11. 9 -11. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, it's so good to be so young. Enjoy it. <laughs> Oh. I don't know. Um, so basically what this says is buy utility, rent luxury. So if you're going to be commuting 100 miles, you want to get like a nice Toyota Corolla or a Honda mm -hmm. Accord or something. And if you're going to rent, or if you need to be some bling or something, you'll just get a limo and just rent it for the night. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what that means. Um, and this is something Dave Ramsey might say too, is don't let your house payment um, exceed 40%. And essentially, your house is supposed to be a blessing, not a curse. So you don't want it to like consume every moment. Don't like stretch too much to get the perfect house because at the end of the day, it probably won't be the perfect house because it's just... It won't be your only... Right. Only um, ...than a year ago, but not by much. So it says Ada County, um, we did have a decline of 5.6% um, because we're focusing on Canyon County. We actually had a decline of 7% December over December. And so one of the reasons for that is that, not that the crash was happening, but because prices had gone up just like, like it was on a, a Chinese, what are those firecrackers that go up? <laughs> anyway, you guys know about those. Rocket. Right, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Um, so some of the places, the four uh, housing markets that actually had prices come down was Coeur d'Alene and Boise, and so we're talking about that because they had gone up so much. The exact same thing for Austin, all those Californians. You're from California too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> um, was that uh, Californians went to Austin. San Francisco, I don't know exactly why their prices would have gone down. I mean, it's such a, like a paradise. Well, if, ever, if everyone's leaving California, then all of a sudden they have an influx of houses that they have to sell as well. So yeah. I guess, uh, a lot of people uh, moved out of San Francisco just because their prices are also just outrageous adjacent as well as San Jose. That's very true. And prices are still real good in San Jose too. They've come down a little bit. So this talks about inbound migration. And so the people that are moving to Idaho, basically it's like we got 56% are under you know, 34 and under. And so these people probably are not selling a house that they've been paying on for 20 years in California and coming up here and putting a lot of money down. These are people that may not have much money and so they'll probably be renting, which is gonna make our renting market stronger. And so the more demand you have in a market, then obviously prices go up. 
So and this kind of is interesting too. So where is everybody coming from? California, <laughs> Washington, Oregon. Yay! Yay, hey, we're number one. It's the first time I've seen that graph. 67 percent. Yeah. Well, if you think of it as the whole West Coast, I mean, that's 75 <laughs> less percent. <laughs> right. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on now. So this is our Treasure Valley Dave market summary. We have one for Ada County too. Oh yeah, I'm Treasure Valley Dave. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you'd like to get this every month, I know you guys are going to Minnesota, but um, just let us know. We'll be glad to send it out to you every month uh, when we put it together. So this talks about some of the things that are going on in the market. Um, over here, you can see existing homes. The median price is 342. So a year ago, that would have been 100,000 more than. Um, and new homes are still, they're, they're not all 442,000, and we'll look at some in a little bit. Um, so for the Treasure Valley, these blue lines are what houses are going for in Treasure Valley on average, and then the orange one is what the national average is, and you can see that here in the Canyon County, we're almost the exact same. So when people in California or wherever say, it's like, oh, you guys are like way too expensive now, we're gonna go to Arizona or something, it's like, Actually, we're not that expensive. We're just like a little 10,000 over the national average. Um, so this graph shows the blue line is prices and inventory is the orange one. And we can see that prices had been going up. This goes all the way back to 2006. So it's like a really long view. And uh, so we can see the prices went up, but then they kind of spiked there. And since there, they have been coming back down. So at this point, everyone was saying, well, I'm going to wait by when prices come down. Prices have come down. Um, and inventory, we had a lot. And now our inventory is coming down. We don't have nearly as many as we used to. So if we were having a crash, like we did back in the old days, you would expect more inventory. But I'm not seeing that now. Um, this is our, it, the blue is the interest rate. And you can see it's like right here. It's like uh, they said, well, we need to get inflation under control. We only have one tool in our toolbox. We're gonna jack up the interest rates, and then that's what they did. A little breather, and then phew, went up again. But now they're coming back down. So we've got prices that have come down, interest rates that have come down. Um, and this is probably the last key to, to understanding what's going on in our market right here in Canyon County. This is um, the number of houses sold in the blue, and then the uh, days on market meaning from the time the seller puts out the market before they go under contract. And so you can see that the seasonality of it, um, in the summer we have a lot more people looking for houses, buying houses, and so the demand goes up, and that's what these peaks are. And then about this time of year, you know, the holidays, um, no one's wanting to buy a house, so the demand goes down, prices go down, and uh, also the days on the market goes up because there's not as many people out there buying. So I say all that to say this, even during COVID, we still saw these spikes going on, that right now, if you're looking at buying a house in the Treasure Valley, that this is like the sweet spot because it's gonna be going back up. We've got interest rates down, we've got prices down, and we have low demand. Next. So, things that happen once you become a homeowner as opposed to a renter. And you guys have never been homeowners before, but you probably lived in homes, so some of this might make sense to you. Nine ways that, um, let's just go through. Financial security. So you've probably seen the statistics that show that um, the wealth that people have who are homeowners versus renters, homeowners is like 85% have much higher wealth than renters ever do. Mm -hmm. And they get that because of the equity they build in this house and then the first house isn't their forever house and they buy another one and they just kind of like keep moving up. Um, peace of mind. So your house payment is your house payment. So your principal and interest is always going to stay the same throughout the entire length of the loan unless you have a, a buy down program, which uh, Darren's going to talk about a, a little bit. Pride of ownership and stake in your neighborhood. So this means that when you have your house and you're in a neighborhood with many more homeowners, everyone's gonna have kind of like a this sense of pride. They're gonna keep their house up, keep their grass mowed. Um, if you go into a neighborhood that is kind of junky and there's like tons of cars all over the place, that might just be more of a, a rental neighborhood. And so you can kind of really see the difference there. Um, increased interest in home and garden TV. 
I don't know, it's like, I've had some people that say, oh, I'm gonna tear down that wall, I'm gonna knock that wall down. And so if it's your house, it's like, okay, <laughs> whatever. But I mean, you can go ahead and make the house your own. If there's little personalization things that you'd like to do, you know, paint this or change out the front door. You could do that because it's your home. Um, I don't know if your the landlords over here at the apartments would let you do something like that. Probably not. Um, <laughs> and your honeydew list may increase, especially if you get an existing home. If there are maybe <laughs> little projects need to be done. You get to buy a few tools, though. Yeah, you get to buy tools. <laughs> oh, they're mainly for me. I'm the one that does a lot of that stuff. Nice. <laughs> but on the other hand, let's say you're working real hard every day and you just don't want you don't want to do a honeydew list, you'd rather have time with your honey. Mm -hmm. So we could buy a brand new house. The thing is, when you buy a brand new house, guess what? The roof's new, the HVAC is new, the furnace filter's new. It's like, there's nothing you have to do. I mean, other than paint the walls, but yeah, all that we would gotta be paint done. The walls. We're gonna tear that wall down. <laughs> Break it. See, sorry, Zach. Huh? <laughs> Happens. Um, and what's kind of interesting too, is you'll become more attuned. It's like, you know, you buy a particular model of a car and then you start seeing it everywhere you turn. And it's kind of the same when you buy a house too. It's like you'll, you start to be very tuned in to when people are talking about, well, we'll just raise property taxes to pay for this or that, or different things that, I don't know, it's like, you see what the neighbors do, say, well, I'd like to do that to my backyard or something. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of like, are more aware of what's going on. And that kind of brings us down to number nine, is that um, the, you have the, more of the financial responsibility in mind so it's like maybe before you just vote to raise tax, property tax on stuff, you want to know the the entire issue more thoroughly instead of just just voting. And also, especially the kids are going to see you guys being you know, financially responsible, and then they're going to grow up the same exact way. So that's kind of cool. Four things. So this there might be a couple from the other list on here, but so you're responsible for the repairs and expenses. So you'll want to kind of save up for those. It's nice to have a little you know, emergency fund. It's like someday something's going to happen. So it's back to that financial spot. So I just put a little bit away because you just can't call the landlord and have him come out because it's for the landlord. Um, everything is a separate bill. I don't know. I mean, there's some things that are included with your rent, like maybe the trash or something. And when you have your own house, it's going to be separate. So there'll be some more things you do have to pay for. Property tax increases can mean sudden spikes in your expenses. Um, I don't know about Minnesota, but I do know that here in Idaho, the law is that any taxing district cannot raise their budgets more than 3% in a year. So that means the most your taxes could ever go up in one year, property taxes could go up in one year is 3%. Um, and they haven't been going up like that, but that's the most. So it's like a sudden spike, you're not going to see a spike. It's kind of like that peace of mind that it'll never go up um, over 3%, at least here. Right. Okay. And the nice thing about here compared to California, we're from Vacaville, is that you can talk to your, your representatives here and say, hey, I'm not happy. You need to lower my property taxes. Mm -hmm. And you see a big push right now for um, people in the legislature to actually lower property taxes. So it's. In California, they just laugh at you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we're gonna take it anyway. Um, here's the thing: where you can build up your equity for a home purchase, and we're gonna talk about equity in a little bit because that is such a powerful thing. Is that it? Okay, I guess that was it. I guess a little bit is right now. Uh, Eleven ways to build equity. So you do have your rising home prices, and so have prices ever gone down? Well a little bit once in a while. So this is from the Federal Reserve back to 1965. And you can see that prices have almost always gone up, but there's the, you know, the crash from 07, 08. But then within nine years back to 2015, they're back, right back where they were, and then they went up. So it's like, if you buy a house today and you're in it for six months or a year, is the value going to still be the same? It's hard to tell. I mean, it might have taken one of these little dips, but if you're looking at it for more of the long term, like if you're going to be in it for you know, five years or better, then statistically, the value is going to go up. And if you would have bought here, your value would have shot right through the roof, mm -hmm. which is kind of scary in a way. Um, but back to equity, the amount that goes to the principal comes down, so you're going to get more equity because you're paying off the loan. 
you can also have larger mortgage payments. So you win the lottery or something, you just you write a little extra money, put it there every month, it goes directly to bringing down your principal, um, which increases your uh, equity. There's this program where you can do a bi-weekly mortgage payment, basically you just pay every two weeks, or no, twice, every two weeks instead of once a month, and it gives you an extra two weeks in the whole year. Um, you could do that, or just send a log, log a little bit extra mm -hmm. um, with your payment. A shorter mortgage term. So back in California, we refinanced, and we went from a 30 to a 15. And I will be you. Do you know how long it takes to pay off a 15-year mortgage? Fifteen years. Oh, <laughs> you got that for the trick question. question. So, uh, and back to that story about us doing that. Avoid refinancing. So, if you're go, you don't want to use your house as an ATM machine. Um, do you want to like pay on it? But now we did refinance, but we went from a thirty to a fifteen, mm -hmm. and we didn't pull a penny out. So that really kind of helped us. Going to a 15 race is your monthly bill, like maybe 200 bucks or so, mm -hmm. but it pays it off. In the worst case scenario, it pays it off in half the time. Though. Exactly. Um, home improvements, back to uh, you know making the house. This isn't just maintenance. Right? This is like maybe you need to add on a room or you wanted to RV bay that you built next to your house or something like that. So that's gonna uh, increase the value of your entire property. Uh, maintenance isn't, going to increase your value, but not doing maintenance is going to hurt your value. So it's like, if it's starting to fall apart, the shutters are falling off, and um, that's really going to uh, bring the value down. Curb appeal, this kind of goes along with that. You want it to look pleasant. So like, if um, someone's buying it, particularly if it's on the market, you want it when someone pulls out to say, oh my gosh, this is such a beautiful place. And you could rent it out. Let's say you've been in there for a while, you got the mortgage paid down good, um, you want that house over there and you've been saving up, you could use this one as a rental. And you can have that income coming in. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be paying off the rest of your mortgage. And then when that mortgage is paid off, then you'll have this piece of investment over here that's going to be throwing off a couple thousand dollars every month. And um, you could, when you get to retirement age, believe me, it happens. <laughs> if you turn around, like it's like, oh my gosh, where'd that last 30 years go? I have no idea. Um, so that will, uh, that's something you can do there. A bigger down payment, the bigger down payment you put on it, the lesser payment's going to be, and it'll also increase your equity. Steven, did you want to do this part? I'd love to. All right. So we've got some examples of houses right here in the Nampa area. Yeah, so essentially, if you guys were gonna buy your ideal home, how big would you want it to be? Like two bedroom, three bedroom, or are you thinking small, like two bedrooms, or how big you feel? If it's just us three bedroom, because mm -hmm. we both um, tend to be on our computers a lot, and we don't want to be in the same room. Fair so enough. Yeah. Loud, and so does she, and then we're competing. Part of the reason why I come into the office to work instead of working from home is because I have kids that make the noise and so it makes exactly. things a lot tougher. Um, there's actually a pretty wide variety of homes and things that we even have on the search here. So um, this one actually, it just went pending today. So look, I, I'd like to look at that one because I feel like it's a pretty big bang for the buck. It is slightly smaller uh, for square footage. Do you know how big your apartment is now? Uh, it's 1,000. Well, okay, yeah. so this is slightly larger at uh, 1163, but really similar. And you know what? You don't have neighbors that bang on your wall and trump up and down the stairs. We're three flights of stairs. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah it's uh, happened with more than once. So I've had a lot of devices. Yeah, no kidding. I've definitely been in traffic and trying to get my earbuds to connect to my phone. And it's like, no, don't discover a new device. What is going on here? So. This one in particular, uh, we actually happened to know the agent who had this one listed. And I was really excited to see for her that it got, you know, went pending today, which pending means basically we have an accepted contract. Doesn't mean that it's sold yet, but basically they said yes to the buyers to buying it. Um, pretty straightforward as far as the bedrooms go. Um, so the kitchen space is not so bad for, you know, first time home buyer. Is that a little wine rack that's mm -hmm. hiding next to yeah. it? Wow. 
dishwasher? It almost looks like the dishwasher and then they jam some wine bottles next to it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that would do great. I don't don't dishwashers get hot? They can throw off some heat. Yeah, yeah that's I, a good point. Um, okay, it's a little concerning. I'm going to keep that in mind, though, for when you don't know what to do with that little buffer space between cabinets. Just be like, just get yourself a five inch or a four inch hole uh, all bits and just right in there. I like it. So this one, I mean, you know, Darren will talk a little bit about this, too, because there's different ways to, you know, start a loan and, and to pay for everything. But um, let me see the math. Let's see. Where's the math? Um, so at $309,000, I feel like this is... To it. it must be an irrigation ditch. That's not a river. It couldn't be. Let's see here. Okay. The location is important, is what we're saying, correct? Exactly. So some people would see this storage area as being kind of a downside. I have a commercial kind of office space behind my house, and I love that it's there because there's no restaurants in there, there's no backyard neighbors. It's just, it's really quiet. So that's one of those things that, you know, people have to take into consideration for themselves. But it feels like if you were here, you would just have so much quiet and there's the irrigation ditch here too. So definitely something to keep in mind for options. Now let's see what part of town this is. Okay. It's West Namba. Yeah. We used to live right there. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's right into downtown near the, the shopping area near um, the college. It goes to Net -Net 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 -Net. Yeah. Fred Meyer. So it's it's a pretty good location. Um, let's see here. And the other one that I thought was a pretty good deal. So this is a brand new house. So you figure for essentially twenty thousand dollars more. This is a brand new house really similar as well, a couple hundred square feet more, but you still have a two-car garage. And no all honey-do list? No honey-do list. <laughs> and new homes always come with a one-year warranty at least. Mm -hmm. So if anything comes up, you know, within that first year, you just send an email to somebody. Oh, not an email. They have their portal like you would for renters. Yeah, right. um, and you just send that in and they're like, okay. Well, Let's that also fall, fall under, like, I knew a lot of new houses do need to settle, so, like, if per se, they committed the cardinals in of putting the backsplash on before mm -hmm. the house settled, would that also fall into that? Or so, that at least around here, it's not necessarily a settling issue, like, um, in theory, it could happen. Mm -hmm. But mostly it's just the expansion and contraction of the materials through all four seasons mm -hmm. that basically you'll see like kind of sometimes in the ceiling you'll see a, a crack where basically the, the sheetrock has heated up and cooled and it's sort of a little thin, it didn't apply sheetrock okay. mud as thick as they should. But basically, you know, like little nails that pop out or something like that in the sheetrock, that's a common one, or doors that are a little bit out of alignment as mm -hmm. the house, you could call it settling. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it goes through the seasons and then they'll come out, adjust everything, fix everything, make sure that it's good to go. Um, and then most home builders do have like a sort of little called a midterm warranty for the workmanship and the structure. So you can really kind of have your mindset at ease where it's like, okay, if something major happened here and there's a huge plumbing leak or God knows what would happen, it's like the roof blew out. Right. But a lot of that stuff can be covered by a, a brand new home warranty. So okay. new construction, I would say, new construction warranty. Um, and CBH is the builder on this one and it's a pretty, Typical, you know, gray, white, black, sometimes brown cabinets, but you'll see this a lot. Um, in fact, I helped my sister buy a CBH, and um, it was basically the same colors, you know, like yeah. very kind of neutral palette, but modern. Something that you can work, something that you can start with. Right, right. yeah, and then you paint, mm -hmm. right? You make it your own, but um, really the space in here being 1,300 square feet, you do feel like there's more storage, the hallways are wider, the bedrooms have a little bit more space. Um, it's really nice to get to that sort of square footage mark. The closer to 1,500 square feet with three bedrooms, the more open it feels, the more space you have. Um, so yeah, these are, and the thing about like CBH and also Hubble is they have these homes all the time. They're everywhere in the valley. They have all their different neighborhoods. So you can really find if it's if you end up uh, falling in love with a house plan, and and the house with that house plan sells, mm -hmm. you can find another one. 
and it'd be probably pretty similar wherever you end up going as long as it's near a major you know met metropolis yeah. kind of thing. Um, so Darren, do you want to talk about financing options and like payment options and stuff like that? And now this is all in theory because obviously we don't pull in anyone's credit tonight or anything. You know, like it's just in theory. But let's say this house in particular at 329, um, let's talk some scenarios. Yeah, I can pop over to it. Maybe even start with the process of like, how do you begin with somebody who's like first time buyer and then we can build. This is an application, yeah. First thing, first application we see we're at credit, income, debt. Yeah. Um, and then go over, you know, what resources you have for down payment and closing costs. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of programs out there, like you'd mentioned, the 25 thousand Biden money. I haven't done one of those yet, but there are other programs out there. I'll let you stand up by yourself. Um, you ri literally can get into a house for half of a percent of the purchase price. So 1500 bucks on 300000 um, That's of your own funds, can't be a gift. Mm -hmm. You can also get gift funds from family member, church work, nonprofit. So the myth is a lot of people think you have to have a lot of money to buy a home. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's the impression I was under. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't. I mean, fifteen hundred bucks isn't. No, that's you know, too much. Month rent, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a lot of resources out there for that. Um, as you heard, interest rates did go up. They have came back down towards more reasonable, and with prices, home prices coming down, mm -hmm. that helps as well. Um, there's uh, incentives to help with that as well, like uh, rate buy down. Um, the seller will pay for a rate buy down. And that can lower your interest rate from say six percent to four percent. Um, any questions you guys have as far as um, resources or? Not currently. No. Um, I think the only one I've looked into is the on that the FHA loan. FHA. Yeah, I've only looked at that, and I've seen that they're pretty. Um, flexible in terms of like acceptance. However, there are a lot of stipulations that add on to it as well. The big thing with FHA and conventional, um, FHA is easier to get into with credit and income. You can stretch the income to mm -hmm. debt a little more and your credit score doesn't have to be quite as high. Mm -hmm. If you don't put 20% down on the home, you're gonna have mortgage insurance to deal with in some way, one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, so those factors, those monthly amount, will vary between those conventional and FHA, and really goes off your credit score. Um, FHA is kind of a fixed. Um, you can actually get into a conventional loan with less money down oh. um, than FHA, but the credit score requirement's a little more. Oh. You know. So 3% and 3.5%, um, conventional 3%, FHA 3.5%, mm -hmm. um, but these other programs that come in like Idaho Housing that's where you don't have to come in with a half of a percent. Okay. So. so if you have the money and you can go FHA or conventional, what's the difference there? Uh, you want to look at credit score. So if you're a 620 credit score, FHA is going to be your best option interest rate wise. Okay. So um, if you're 700, then we're going to look at going conventional. Okay. Because okay. with the conventional, after you hit 80% equity in your house, then you can have the PMI taken off? Correct, yeah. Okay. So and yeah. that'll save you a couple It's kind of like FHA is like a starter home. <laughs> <laughs> if right. you have to go that route. Okay, got it. Um, no. so, and it's important, because we've had clients that didn't know that they were victims of identity theft, mm -hmm. oh. to, to start talking with the lender yeah. early. The more time you have, um, it's not that you no know, one wants to go out there and, I'm happy to get a mortgage, right? Yeah. That's not the, you're happy to move into your new home and be a homeowner. Mm -hmm. uh, but the more time you have to prepare and look at things um, from from a mortgage standpoint, I mean, if your credit, there's something we can do in your credit score to bump it up to that 700, right. mm -hmm. you know, versus saying that 650, 620, uh, we'll do that. And you know, and you have the time yeah. to go into a conventional much better mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, um, the mortgage insurance is less. Okay. Um, my question on like. Um, adjusting our credit scores. We have plans to adjust ours because there's some things that we need to we do need to take care of. Like unfortunately, our accounts aren't doing fancy because of money issues. Um, we kind of may have put ourselves in debt to get out of here to get out here mm -hmm. because of just the circumstances that we were in in California. Yeah. So um, like our like rough time of thinking of moving is about twenty. End of twenty twenty four. 
end of 2024, okay. would that be enough time to adjust and try to get into a conventional loan? Yeah, it really depends on what's on there, and that's another thing why you start off early, because if you do have things, you might think, oh, I'm going to have to pay this $2,000 medical bill off to qualify for a loan. That medical bill might not be doing anything to your credit score. Right. There might be a few other things you can do to shoot that credit score up and just mm -hmm. leave that alone. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's just kind of working on figuring out what's having the largest impact and then working on those debts right. first. Okay. Right. And I can look at a credit report and say, you know, this, this may be doing that, but I also have an expert credit expert mm -hmm. that can look at it and say, <clears throat> do this. If you need credit repair, obviously we have a resource for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked with a lot of them throughout the years, mm -hmm. and there's good ones and bad ones. The okay. um, worst thing you can do is go and get on a, the internet and search for one and go with them because you might be paying them for six months and they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's best to have someone that's used okay. use them. So you're yeah, you're, uh, here. Yeah, absolutely. your license is to work in Minnesota, right? Yeah, we can do all 50 states. The Line Apply Bank can do all 50 states, so it's not like we have to set you up and then let you go. Mm -hmm. um, so you can start helping them now absolutely. for that, even though it's two years down. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, the sooner the better. Two years would probably give you plenty of time to at least get it all our ducks in a row. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And uh, Minnesota would have uh, first-time home buyer programs too. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. It might not be the same as Idaho Housing. Idaho Housing is pretty good nationwide. They're known nationwide to have one of the better ones. Um, just for ease of getting into a home, you know, half of a percent is, is pretty yeah. good. Okay. So, yeah. okay, cool. so you guys are totally set on Minnesota? Or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We kind of are because um, I have a family, I'm sorry, I put it in my mouth. Um, I have a family friend that just moved out there. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, P and I are very close, and he has a very close friend that lives there as well. And my so. parents are moving to Missouri, so mm -hmm. it's just kind of, just kind of moving migrating, migrating east a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they're moving from California to Missouri. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. They're keeping their house. They're just gonna just rent it out in California, yeah. and then just be in Missouri. Yeah, that's perfect way to do it when you're. Yeah. I mean, no one wants to be a landlord, so to say. But exactly. <laughs> There's companies out there that you can hire to do it and yep. still have a cash flow. It's a great investment. A higher priced homes, right? Mm -hmm. And VA if you're a veteran. Rural development, if you're in a rural area, um, still a good loan. Not as good as it used to be, but it still serves some people. But you can get them a zero down. You can get zero down, 100% <coughs> financing, yeah. Okay. In Minnesota, they probably have some rural areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there is uh, first-time homebuyer savings accounts in Idaho. I know about those. I do not know about the ones in Minnesota, but I would um, do a little online research, okay. just Google it, you know, and see it. Out here, basically, you put your money into an account, and you're just kind of building up a, a savings yeah. account, right? Yeah. Um, to help with down payment, and you can earn 2% <coughs> annually on it. Okay, cool. So, FICO score, it kind of goes, and that's, this book's in there, too, in your folder there. Um, kind of goes over paint what makes up a credit score. In a history, total debt, and your years of history. Isn't it true too that, let's say you buy your house, you're going to closing, that you needed to get some stuff paid off, you can pay that off through closing? In fact, you could even have the seller pay some of your debts off? Uh, only with VA. Only with VA. You can have the seller pay, yeah. And to but you can pay debts off at closing, like if you say, hey, your debt to income's a little high, you got a little too much debt, you gotta pay this off. You can just take one check to closing okay. for, for your down payment. That's oh, awful. Awesome. <laughs> that what you're getting at? Yeah, but it also it looks at, well, it, it recalculates as if you had done this when they put their loan together. Like so a rapid rescore. So you could get like a, a lower interest rate or better terms on your loan. Right. So you don't have to worry about paying off all those little tiny bills all over the place. It can be done in closing. Yep. You can have relatives gift you. Um, Absolutely. Yep. Um, close relatives can't be a long lost you know, <laughs> friend. Not be a dog. Um, <laughs> church work, close family, nonprofits. Like uh, Idaho Housing would be your nonprofit in this case. Mm -hmm. um, so this kind of goes over that too. Idaho Housing, uh, three percent, three hundred thirty-nine thousand. Well, three hundred fifty. Purchase price, you're looking at seventeen fifty to get to a house. That kind of falls into that's that. That's not bad. Level. So all these, all these rumors out there, you have to have twenty percent saved <coughs> up, is not true. It's not. 
But I noticed that with the 1750 cash <coughs> bonus, there's a monthly payment, it says a 2300 roughly. Would that be your mortgage payment that you're paying every month? Or? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I was told it was. Um, 10% for my mom. It, you can put 10%. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And so you did have some money to put into it. I mean, it's easy enough to just look at the figures and what makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, putting an extra $5,000 down, and that might be your last $5,000 to save mm -hmm. 25 a month, yeah. you know, yeah. over 30 years, might not be a, might not make sense. Mm -hmm. You build a cushion. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to mention too is that so your payment there, you also need to figure in that you're going to get these tax benefits from the, you know, when you do your taxes. Mm -hmm. So the, with the money you spend on your mortgage is deductible. And yep. so that might equal, I don't know, 100 bucks a month or 150 bucks a month that you'll get back from the IRS. Of course, you only see that when you do it in April. Mm -hmm. But it, in essence, brings down your When you look at the overall picture, how much you're paying taxes per year, you know, the mm -hmm. rates you can get for sure. And interest is all right off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have any more questions from Darren or from me? Or? Mm -hmm. Probably will when I give you a call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. call me up. Um, you can also hop on and apply on my website. Obviously, we have the technology to, mm -hmm. to do that. And you can schedule a call or however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we're just going to look at income and credit and mm -hmm. say, hey, we need to do this or you're good to go yep. at this amount. Okay, okay. yeah. Because there's a lot of you know urban legends out there that says, well, to get your credit better, you have to do this, which may not be true at all. Yeah. One of the big ones is, oh, people are scared to get their credit pulled from some mortgage company, right? So yeah. the score dip. That's a myth as well. Okay. Oh, what, okay. the, what that myth is is if you're going out trying to get a bunch of credit cards, car loans, mm -hmm. all within a short period of time, oh, that's, that's, that's that throws up red flags mm -hmm. because the credit bureaus look at it as something wrong. Yeah. Okay. Something's financially wrong. So yeah, the earlier the better, just work on it. Okay. So we did record this. Do you guys have any friends that might want to link to this to get their questions answered too? To my current knowledge, no. You'll keep us in mind, right? <laughs> I mean, we live right there. So yeah. <laughs> nice. We drive friends from California that are playing on me? <laughs> You know, I think a lot of my friends. They're currently in the whole phase of just, or the phase of sticking with um, with their parents right now. So, yeah. 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 And I mean, works for them. You kind of have to in California, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> to live out there. Mm -hmm. Sure. Wow. We appreciate you. You got extra yeah. pizza. And I'm available anytime. Well, that's right. That's my energy. <laughs> Yeah, so I've been working with Darren for like five years. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little over five years. Yeah, been longer than five years, Dave. Yeah. We're getting old. Customer service level is mm -hmm. way out there. <laughs> so I, I know you're not going to be buying a house here. It's going to be Minnesota, but mm -hmm. Darren can help you out. And he can help get you a realtor out there. Okay. Well, that's what he also do. Just being it for so long, we know people all over the country, it seems like every Very state. true. And you've probably heard of Keller Williams before. Yes. Is that yeah. Everywhere. If you said, Dave, I need a, I need a Agent in Japan, I'd have you <laughs> <laughs> because we have them everywhere. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh.